The final call in the 2020 presidential elections is still up in the air. I'll be explaining where things are at and detailing the current lawsuits and incidents that could decide the final outcome. Also, the Trump administration reiterated its position on China just before the elections. It recognized the Chinese Communist Party as a threat to America's economic and political way of life. And the Trump administration also went ahead and cleared the sale of sophisticated drones to Taiwan. And the Chinese regime is deeply unhappy about this. I'll be going into this. Welcome back, everyone. The final call on the 2020 presidential elections is still up in the air. The outcome now hangs on the developments in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Arizona mainly, which Biden would need to reach the 270 electoral college votes, and which may still be overturned by lawsuits filed by the Trump administration around changes to voting laws ahead of the elections on incidents of observers being denied access to key locations where votes are still being counted and on other issues. Now, in Arizona, Trump appears to be catching up fast with Biden. The state was called out early by Fox News and by AP and other news outlets as a Biden win, but the Trump campaign is now hopeful it can win the state. You may have seen our interview with Phoenix-based data analysis and political consulting firm Data Orbital, stating that the remaining votes for Arizona could likely lean more heavily towards Trump, and so far this does appear to be the case. In Michigan, meanwhile, which is one of the key battleground states holding 16 electoral college votes, Decision Desk, CNN, and the Associated Press are projecting that Biden may win. But this may be reversed by lawsuits, which I'll be explaining in a bit. And in Pennsylvania, the Trump campaign held a press conference on Wednesday afternoon in Philadelphia and declared that Trump is confident of his victory in Pennsylvania. But much of this may also be determined by the result of various lawsuits, again, which I just mentioned, that are being filed by the Trump administration in several states. The Trump campaign has multiple lawsuits at play and has also filed additional lawsuits in Pennsylvania and Michigan to stop vote counting under the allegations that officials had not been allowed fair access to counting sites. The Trump campaign also filed another lawsuit in Georgia to have late arriving votes kept separate from votes that arrived ahead of the elections. During the event in Philadelphia, Eric Trump, one of Trump's sons, outlined their hopes for a victory in Pennsylvania. My father is up by almost half a million votes in this state with 86% reported and plenty of red counties left to go. Plenty of red counties left to go. We're going to win Pennsylvania, but they're trying to cheat us out of it because they know it's their only path to victory. Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, also said at that event that the mail-in ballots being received are, quote, highly suspicious and that with states such as Pennsylvania changing voting laws and with other problems, that what he's witnessing is, quote, among one of the most anti-democratic things I've ever seen or encountered. The Biden campaign, meanwhile, has been pushing for the idea of counting every vote, including those that arrived after normal deadlines. Biden has urged his supporters to be patient as votes continue to be counted, and his campaign has likewise been criticizing the Trump campaign for actions to stop the counting of late votes in key states. Now, similarly, in Michigan, the Trump campaign has announced it would file a lawsuit to stop ballot counting under allegations that observers are being denied access to vote counting locations, which is raising concerns of potential fraud. Trump campaign manager Bill Stepien said in a statement, quote, President Trump's campaign has not been provided with meaningful access to numerous counting locations to observe the opening of ballots and the counting process, as guaranteed by Michigan law. He added that the Trump campaign is demanding to review ballots that were opened and counted during the time that observers were not giving meaningful access to those sites. He stated that, quote, President Trump is committed to ensuring that all legal votes are counted in Michigan and everywhere else. Similarly, in Georgia, the Trump campaign filed a lawsuit to have late arriving ballots separated from ballots that arrived ahead of the normal deadline. Trump Deputy Campaign Manager Justin Clark said in a statement that the Trump campaign is fighting to uphold rule of law and noted that to legally be counted, mail-in ballots need to be received by 7 p.m. on Election Day. He stated, quote, President Trump and the Georgia Republican Party have filed suit to require all Georgia counties to separate any and all late-arriving ballots from all legally cast ballots to ensure a free, fair election in which only legal, valid ballots count. The Trump campaign is also requesting a recount in Wisconsin, and on the evening of November 4th, 
Trump declared victories in Pennsylvania, Georgia, North Carolina, and Michigan, although the status of votes being counted still is up in the air. Now, folks, I'll give a brief recap on what has happened so far with these elections. Now, you might remember November 3rd, early voting and early polls suggested that Biden had the lead. That was the suggestion of that. A lot of Republicans noted, however, that a lot of Republicans vote on Election Day, being November 3rd. Now, I was doing the live election coverage with that with NTD. Those of you who missed it can still check that out. Uh, but here's what happened, basically. Early voting was a Biden lead. As things went forward, a lot of states were flipping red. Trump campaign appeared to be winning as new same day of votes were coming in. And then suddenly, the things seemed to stop. Trump came out later and said, you know, that he was watching these votes come in. They were planning to have a victory celebration, and suddenly everything stopped. And here's what happened. In the key battleground states, these battleground states, the key ones to win the election, these places stopped counting the votes. And Americans were left hanging in limbo as they did not get results of the election on Election Day. This is because some changes were made ahead of time to the way ballots would be counted. And even some areas that did show a high Trump lead, Trump, for example, had a very, very high lead in Pennsylvania. It was not weighed as a Trump victory. And so here we are now waiting for more votes to come in. And the Trump campaign, as we mentioned, is also filing several lawsuits because in places like Pennsylvania, for example, the local governments changed election laws ahead of the election. They made it, for example, so that votes could still be counted if they came in late. They're counting them for several days. This is raising concerns on the conservative side of a potential election fraud. Many Democrats, meanwhile, are saying every vote should be counted. That's where things are at currently. Now, meanwhile, the Trump administration reiterated its position on China just ahead of the elections. On November 2nd, the National Security Council issued a statement saying that Trump's policy on China is to put America first and that it recognizes the Chinese Communist Party as a threat to America's economic and political way of life. It stated, quote, We are no longer turning a blind eye to the People's Republic of China's conduct, nor are we hiding our criticism of its Communist Party behind closed doors. It announced the release of a book, Trump on China, Putting America First which is a collection of speeches from the Trump administration on foreign policy relating to China, and which it notes are similar to the long telegram sent by U.S. diplomat George Kennan in 1946 to the State Department, which outlined his views on the Soviet Union. Again, comparing this to a Cold War again. Now, it states, quote, The Chinese Communist Party prefers not to have the information and messages contained in this book shared. It does not want people around the world to know what the party really believes, is doing, and is planning. It states as well that, quote, the competition with which we are faced is not China versus the United States. It is the Chinese Communist Party with its Marxist, Leninist, and mercantilist vision for the world versus freedom-loving people everywhere. And it also adds that, quote, these high-level speeches serve to combat the propaganda machine at the heart of the Chinese Communist Party's global strategy. President Trump understands that it is past time for America to counter China's message about the supposed strengths of its authoritarian model. Now, what are we seeing here? This is, again, deepening the comparisons of the Chinese Communist Party to the Soviet Union. It is calling out the Chinese Communist Party on ideological grounds and is making clear the real objectives of the CCP, which are not often discussed. The Chinese Communist Party has a mercantilist agenda, as this policy statement states. And the Chinese Communist Party also regards its system, the China model, as the future of world governance. It is pushing for an authoritarian communist system to govern the world, and that is the real objective of the CCP. This new report makes that clear, states it clearly. And in addition, the Trump administration went ahead and cleared the sale of sophisticated drones to Taiwan. The clearance by the State Department was outlined in a formal notification to Congress in a move that the CCP has been deeply unhappy about. Congress now will have 30 days to object to the sale if it wants to, but this isn't likely to happen given it has bipartisan support on this. Now, U.S. News reports that the $600 million deal would be the first of its kind since the Trump administration loosened policies on exporting sophisticated and closely guarded drone technology. This is also part of U.S. arms sales to Taiwan, which are moving through now with a value of close to $5 billion. 
The Chinese Communist Party views this as the United States helping Taiwan challenge Chinese Communist Party interests. Now that said, folks, we're broadcasting five days a week, Monday through Friday. And also I do a live Q&A on Sundays, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, so tune in for that. And folks, we're in uncertain times right now. But one of the greatest cures to uncertainty is good old-fashioned accurate news reporting. At the Epoch Times, we're trying to restore integrity to journalism under the principles of truth and tradition. If you want to support Crossroads, the best way to do so is to subscribe to the Epoch Times. I'll have a link to that in the description below if you're interested. Again, we'd really appreciate your support. Now that said, folks, as always, stay informed and stay free. Mm -hmm.